Hey there, so you just bought the R6, you love it, you're excited about it, but then you get your images back on your computer and you're like, I don't know how to edit these. I'm frustrated, what the heck's going on? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your R6 images and still get the look that you're used to from your old camera, even with the R6 files. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to our YouTube channel. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also giving you a little peek in the behind the scenes of our everyday life. So last year we upgraded to the R6 and we made a lot of videos about how much we loved it. And a lot of photographers, we saw them take the plunge and buy it for themselves. And what we've heard is that these photographers, they love shooting with it. They love how sharp it is. They love how they can focus anywhere. They love the shooting aspect of shooting with the R6, but when it comes to actually uploading their raw files and seeing them in Lightroom and starting to edit them, they start to get freaked out. Why? Because the files from an R6, R6 look very different than a file from another camera. And so a lot of these frustrations are mostly coming from people who are going from the Mark III to the R6. So what I've done is I've taken a Mark III and I've taken an R6 and I took a picture of the exact same thing, my husband, Michael, and I'm gonna show you straight out of camera. They were the same settings, same light, and I just wanna help you understand what exactly is happening to these files. Because the truth is, I actually think you you have more available to you when it comes to editing with the R6 files than you ever have had with the Mark III, but you have to understand what you need to do to get you to a place where you feel comfortable editing with such a new type of file. So I'm gonna walk you through how to notice what is different and how to make changes. And so let's go ahead and jump to the computer. All right, so this is the Mark III. This is the R6 raw file. The Mark III I'm seeing has a lot more contrast, a lot more pop, a lot more definition in the highlight and shadow. There's just overall more dimension in that raw file. Um, I think the R6 image looks really flat and boring. Um, I noticed that the R6 has dull, bland whites. So I'm looking at this part of our fireplace versus this image here. Um, again, these are the same exact settings. ISO 320, shot with a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, and this was just for reference, this was shot with a 50 millimeter 1.2 um, EF lens. It was not the R series uh, 50. Um, 2.0, one over 500th um, of a second fourth shutter. And again, I, these, these are very subtle differences, but if you are a professional photographer, you're going to be able to notice, especially when I zoom in, how much of a difference it really is. This image, this R6 image looks flat. It looks like it's lacking big time um, in depth and dimension. And so that is going to really come into play when it comes to editing a style to match a previous style. Um, the last thing that I noticed was that the Mark III has more vibrant colors and overall the R6 just has dull kind of boring colors. I'm really, really noticing that in the leaves right here. So those are the things that um, stick out to me the most. The Mark III RAW file is allowing photographers to see visually closer to like their final um, end product of an image. And so it seems easier to edit this because this seems like, oh, I'm just so far from like what I ultimately want it to look like. And so that makes me think, I don't like this. I don't like this type of raw file. So if you made the switch from the Mark III to the R6, you're wanting your images to, images to look like your previous style, but you're editing them in a way that you always have with the Mark III. So you're editing the way you always have with a different camera and it's not working for the R6. So how are we gonna figure this out? I think you're gonna need to relearn how to get your style with a new editing pattern because of the change of the raw file. So ultimately, you're going to have to relearn how to edit in a way to get the look that you want. And how do we approach that? How do we how do we do that? My approach is um, let's edit your Mark III image the way that you normally would. All right. So let's get the look that you love because that's ultimately what you want to match. And then let's talk through what you have to do to the R6 image in order to match that. And I think a lot of people get frustrated with this process because they don't know how to look at an image and say, oh, that's missing this. Oh, that's missing that. So um, again, let's look at this image and look at this image. So this is the flat R6 file. This is the more dynamic um, Mark III image. And we're going to make these edits look the same. All right. So I 
I edited, this is the Mark III image right here. So I edited that first to get the look that I wanted. So I said, okay, I like this. I like it a lot. I'm going to do this edit. I'm going to apply it over here to the R6. So to me, these images look pretty darn close. I mean, I'm paying attention to the color of the blue and the curtains, looking at the skin tone. There may be a slight more magenta tone here in, in this skin than over here, but it's very faint. I mean, we're, we're talking really hard to tell. Very, very faint. Um, and so I see a little bit more pink here in the cheeks than I do here. Honestly, I like the look of this better. Um, but that's the only really big difference. I think his shirt looks similar. The chair looks similar. Um, even the highlight color on the blinds and the whites look very similar. The greens look similar. I'm looking right here, right here, and in the leaves of the fiddle fig tree. Very similar edits, right? But the adjustments that we did uh, in order to get the R6 image to look like the Mark III image um, were quite interesting. So let's take a look at those. All right, so this is a basic tab comparison. Um, and on the left-hand side, you see the Mark III image. And on the right-hand side, you see the R6 image. All right, so everything is pretty much the same, except for when you get down to exposure. So I had to brighten the R6 a significant amount out in order to get it to a place where it was comparable to my Mark III edit. And that's really important because it's one of the greatest uh, differences in these settings and these sliders that I noticed is that I bumped up the exposure, um, just one little bump here, like one full adjustment. And I did it, I did it six times more um, for the R6 image. And so if you're not used to bumping up your exposure that much, much when you're editing, um, your old way of editing, that's something you're gonna have to get used to. Your R6 images, if you have presets, if you have a pattern of editing, you're gonna need to brighten them a lot more because naturally, compared to your Mark III images, they are a darker file. Um, the contrast was literally the same, highlights the same, shadows just slightly um, more opened and, and reduced with the Mark III. Um, the whites are actually weirdly the same. I thought they'd be different. Um, a huge difference though down here is that I, I saw a lot of the blacks um, removed from the Mark III um, and not so much from the R6. And that makes sense because um, what we found from the raw file from the Mark III um, is that and basically it had a lot more uh, heaviness to it. Um, and so that makes sense that that adjustment would be there and that th it would be different in that way. So um, the presence down here didn't change at all, but let's look at the tonal curve because it's telling as well. All right, so over here we have the Mark III tonal curve and we have the R6 tonal curve of the edit that I just showed you. Um, and one of the biggest things you'll notice is that the tonal curve of the R6 image is more dramatic, all right? So it, I talk in the KJ Consistency course about the backward C on the tonal curve. So no matter what I'm editing, no matter if it's an indoor shot, an outdoor shot, um, no matter if it's a reception shot, if it's a detail shot, all of my images, I, I'm serious, whether it's a family picture of my kids or a family formal shot from a wedding, I am always editing with a backward C in the tonal curve. That backward C is how I know that I'm going to get my KJ style. And if you want to learn more about how to notice these patterns in Lightroom, to have a consistent style, I literally created a whole course. I, I forget, it's like 15 hours of content. It's huge. But I'm teaching you everything I know about Lightroom. So this is my pattern. Now, I don't know what your pattern is. And if you have never discovered your pattern, maybe you don't have a pattern and you literally do whatever the heck you want in Lightroom, you know, no matter what you're shooting. That may be one of the reasons why you don't have consistent edits. But for me, the backward C is, that is my style. But notice the difference here. This backward C is pretty dramatic. This backward C is a little bit more toned down. One of the biggest differences is in the shadows. So it makes sense that I would need to increase the shadows here a bit um, in order to have the pop that I liked from the Mark III. And for me to get the look that I want, I need my shadows to be darker um, than my darks and my blacks in the basic tab because that's how I'm getting the pop without getting the heaviness. So this is a different this is a different backward C than this backward C. Now, how can you take this information and apply it to your own edits? Well, what you can learn from this is when you are editing from a Mark III to an R6, everything has to be uh, more dramatic. 
All right. So if you want to get that pop in that look, you're just going to have a little bit more intense tonal curve in order to get the pop. Um, you're going to have maybe a little different approach to the blacks. Now, for some people who have a darker, heavier style, then they're not going to adjust the blacks as much as I did. Um, but that's one of the biggest differentiations between um, the Mark III and the R6 files. Now, again, I want you to look at this. Now, let's say um, for the R6 file, I didn't realize that I had to brighten it up so much and I only brightened it up, you know, 20%. Then all of a sudden I have this dark, weird image and I don't know what to do with it. It doesn't look like my Mark III image. It doesn't look like what I'm, I'm normally editing with. And that's because you got to make your R6 images brighter. All right, so let's go back here. So that's what I like. It looks great. Um, but what I want to show you, maybe another thing that would help you um, is to take, let's go ahead and take this, um, R, this Mark III file. So this is the Mark III. You see down here the CR2 file. I'm going to take this exact edit copy all those settings, and I'm going to apply it to the R6 file. So you see the CR3 file down here. All right, so I'm going to paste those settings onto here. So something that you'll notice is that these exact settings, so this is the R6 image with the same edit from the Mark III applied without any other adjustments. This is the way it looks on the Mark III. This is the way that it looks on the R6. So what do you notice? You notice that it's darker, that it's flatter, that the whites are duller. The M, that the color is duller. So how do we get this to a place where it looks exactly the same to the Mark III edit? The first thing I'm noticing is that it's too dark, all right? So remember, my exposure on the final edit, I gotta brighten it a bit, all right? So I gotta brighten it a bit. Um, I'm gonna come down here. And I'm actually gonna take some blacks and put it back in. I'm gonna make this 63. Um, that didn't make a huge adjustment, but it kind of filled in some of the light and airiness and gives it a little bit more of that pop. I'm coming down here, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know my shadows need to be darkened a little bit more. Um, and I'm just going back and forth. All right, so I'm looking at this. This is the Mark III versus the um, the R6. And something I'm noticing too is that he's got a little bit more color in his face. Um, and so let's look down here and see what's happening in the HSL sliders, all right? So the HSL sliders, this is exactly the same from the edit to the uh, of the Mark III to the R6. And I'm noticing that we're missing a little bit of the oranges and the reds in the R6 image. So I'm gonna actually change the luminance adjustment. So I'm, I'm basically with this adjustment, I'm taking the oranges of the images of the image and I'm making it brighter. And I don't think I need to do that. Let's just do plus four. Let's look at saturation and let's just do like negative eight here. Um, and instead of taking the reds down so significantly from the Mark III, I'm just gonna do like negative 10. All right, so I'm getting that red tone back in his face a little bit, and that looks a little bit, his, his coloring in his skin looks more similar. So that's another thing that you can pay attention to, specifically coming from the Mark III to the R6, you're gonna meet, you're gonna need to make some adjustments to your reds and your oranges. And so it seems like from this edit that the Mark III is more sensitive to reds and oranges, even magenta tones, than the R6 is. And so if you want to maintain that richness of color, you're gonna need to be, play around with your HSL sliders a little bit more. Before I go, uh, I want to show you what it looks like to take the R6 image and edit it to have the same pop and color as the Mark III um, from a starting place. So this is the KJ preset process. Basically, I have a four-step system that allows photographers to either speed up their editing or find their style more quickly and easily and consistently. Um, and in step one, it's all about opening up the image and adding pop. So a lot's happening um, in this step one uh, over here in the basic tab and the tonal curve. So um, I normally scroll over these and just kind of get a feel for what I want. I'm not necessarily looking at exposure, I'm looking at level of pop. So I'm gonna do bright two, because um, I think that looks great. I'm gonna bump up the exposure with one little tap. Now I'm gonna pull down the highlights um, just a little bit, maybe just with Highlight Saver 1. I'm, all I'm doing is I am taking the highlights down um, with one click of this preset here. Um, but if you look over here, I'm just pulling it down right here and making some adjustments with the highlights and the whites over here on the basic tab. So now it's time to do step three. So now step three is talking about color and tone. And these are profiles. So this is what makes the KJ preset process so interesting is that step three of the KJ preset process is not about another preset. It's about applying a profile, which is interesting. So I'm gonna cool it down a little bit and that will allow me to warm it up 
the way I want. I th- I'm going to do golden warm um, with normal greens. So if I did cooler greens, it would take the yellow out of the greens. Um, but I'm going to just do golden warm and leave it as is. Now there's a few things I'm noticing here. His eyes look a bit dark. The shadows look a big bit dark to me. Um, so I'm going to come back up to step two. And I am going to actually um, brighten those shadows. So I just hit that right there. Um, I think this is good. I'm going to cool it down again and then um, bump up the profile just a little bit. All right, so this is looking good. I like the pop. I like the depth. I like the dimension. This is looking great. Um, there is something, I'm, I don't even know if I need to come down here and do anything um, with these additional color refinements. You can see how it's adjusting the image. Take out the blues, um, reduce the greens if you're more of a fine art editor, um, color boost. I don't really think I need to do any of that. Um, but what I may do is come over here to um, my brushes. The KJ Nuzzle brush along with four other brushes come with the KJ preset process. I'm just brightening up his eyes. We have a newborn guys. Michael looks a little tired and no, I, I don't blame him. We're not getting much sleep. So um, I just brightened his eyes a little bit. So overall, that's how I would take an image that looks like this and make it pop like that. So I hope that's helpful. Ultimately, these images are never going to be fully 100% the same because they're very, very different files from very, very different places. The cameras are different, so the files are going to be different. But I hope this allows you to see that you have the power and the ability to be able to see an image, see another image, and compare what is so different. Without the knowledge of knowing what's different, you feel powerless and helpless as to get the ultimate result that you want. And so um, I teach people. There's a whole section in the KJ Consistency course where I talk about noticing the problem. Like part of editing is being able to look at an image and think, man, that's too green or, oh, that's too magenta or the blacks are too heavy or I need to open up the shadows. If you've never trained yourself to look at an image and be able to spot and locate what you want to change and then go change it, I would say that's a foundational trait that you've got to learn or else you're just going to be moving sliders all around just hoping you find the solution. If you have never understood what Lightroom has to offer you and you don't understand what sliders do, you don't know where to go to fix the problem in your images, the KJ Consistency course was made for you. It walks you through every step of Lightroom and I teach you everything I know about the program after using it for over 10 years. If you want more information about the KJ Consistency course, you can find it at the link below. Also. If you love this and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss other videos that are coming in the future. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.